set out on an investigation into the ways in which kidney health is impacted by your food. Filtering and eliminating waste and poisons from our bloodstream is the responsibility of our kidneys, which are essential organs. They are nevertheless sensitive to our diet due to the intricacy of their activity. Anyone trying to maintain their renal health or treat pre-existing renal diseases needs to know these fundamental facts. For helpful nutritional advice and tactics to safeguard these vital organs, watch through till the conclusion. We'll look at six common meals in this video that can be harming your kidneys without you realizing it. Number one, spinach. A rich source of iron, folate, and vitamins A and C, spinach is a leafy green vegetable. However, it's vital to mention a key caution. Especially for older individuals, spinach is high in oxalates. Kidney stones can develop in certain individuals due to chemicals called oxalates. The symptoms of kidney stones, which are hard mineral and salt deposits that form in the urinary tract, include intense pain, blood in the urine, nausea, vomiting, and even infection. Kidney stones composed of calcium oxalate are the most prevalent kind. Foods high in oxalates, such as spinach, are absorbed partially by your body and expelled in urine in the remaining amount. Oxalate can bind with calcium in your urine and produce crystals that can grow into stones if it is too concentrated or too acidic. People who have kidney disease are more likely to have elevated amounts of calcium and oxalate in their urine due to the kidney's inability to effectively filter out excess minerals and fluids. Research reveals that spinach can considerably boost urinary oxalate levels, hence heightening the chance of developing calcium oxalate kidney stones. In comparison to a controlled diet, one study indicated that eating spinach increased urine oxalate by 33%. Does this indicate that people who have kidney problems should never eat spinach, not invariably. If spinach is taken in moderation, it can still be a part of a balanced diet. It's vital to combine it with other foods that are low in oxalate and high in calcium to lessen the danger. Apples, grapes, carrots, lettuce, cabbage, and cauliflower are a few foods low in oxalate. One can reap the nutritious benefits of spinach while reducing the possible hazards connected with consuming a large amount of oxalate by carefully selecting what to match with it. Number two, dried fruits. Dried fruits are just fruits that have had the majority of their water content removed, such as raisins, dates, apricots, figs, and prunes. They are frequently used in desserts and make delicious snacks. They could appear like a healthy alternative, but for those who have diabetes or kidney problems, they might not be the ideal decision. This is due to the fact that dried fruits are concentrated sources of potassium and sugar. For instance, half a cup or 65 grams of dried apricots has approximately 755 milligrams of potassium, which is more than 30% of the daily potassium intake that is advised for people with kidney disease, dried fruits, also contain a lot of sugars that metabolize quickly, which might be harmful to people with diabetes. Consequently, which fruits are safe to eat if you have renal disease? Fruits that are low in potassium and good for the kidneys include watermelon, pineapples, berries, apples, and limes. For people who are concerned about their kidneys, these fruits are a safer option because they still provide nutritional benefits without the high potassium or sugar content of dried fruits. Number three, oranges. Oranges are highly nutritious and high in fiber, antioxidants, and vitamin C, in addition to their great flavor. They also have a sizable potassium content. However, one large orange has roughly 333 milligrams of potassium, or 15% of the daily potassium limit, for an individual with kidney disease to give you an idea. Orange juice and additional oranges eaten in a single day can quickly push you over your potassium limit, 
even though this may not seem like much. An orange juice cup, for example, has approximately 496 milligrams of potassium, which is about 25% of the daily recommended amount. Depending on their individual potassium levels and total dietary potassium intake, people with kidney illness should consider whether or not to eat oranges. Oranges and other citrus fruits may be consumed in moderation by certain people with renal disease as long as they closely monitor their blood potassium levels and follow their physician's or dietitian's recommendations. It's interesting to note that renal disease sufferers may benefit from oranges. They may help lower the risk of kidney stones by raising the citrate levels in urine. In the end, it's important to balance your diet and speak with medical specialists to figure out what's best for your individual needs. Number four, avocados. Even while avocados are well known for their creamy texture and nutritional value, not everyone should eat them, particularly if they have kidney illness. This is because of how much potassium they contain. One essential element that is vital for controlling blood pressure, neuron function, and muscle contractions is potassium. Although potassium is generally good for health, it can cause problems if the kidneys are damaged and cannot effectively eliminate too much of it from the blood. High potassium levels can cause serious health problems, such as weak muscles, irregular heartbeats, and in severe situations, cardiac arrest. It is advised by the National Renal Foundation that those with renal disease should consume no more than 2,000 milligrams of potassium daily. To put this into perspective, one average-sized avocado has roughly 690 milligrams of potassium, or about 35% of the daily recommended consumption for people with kidney problems. Does this imply that avocados have to be absolutely avoided? Not invariably. You can still enjoy avocados in little amounts by carefully managing portion sizes and balancing them with other low-potassium foods you may incorporate avocados into your diet. Another way to lower their potassium level is to chop and peel the avocado before soaking it in water for two hours. This procedure has the ability to extract some potassium, possibly up to 50% less than what is originally present. Drain the water and use the avocado however you like after it has soaked. This method offers a safer way to consume avocados for individuals monitoring their potassium consumption. Number five, banana. Although they are rich in potassium, bananas are also favored for their pleasant flavor and gratifying texture. Being able to eliminate extra potassium from the blood is a challenge for individuals suffering from kidney illness. Thus, this is an important information. Excessive potassium levels in the bloodstream or hyperkalemia can result from this accumulation. Hyperkalemia may cause weakness, exhaustion, nausea, erratic heartbeats, and even cardiac arrest. It can also be detrimental to your heart and muscles. People with kidney disease should so watch how much potassium they eat and stay away from foods high in potassium, such as bananas. There are roughly four 22 milligrams of potassium in a medium banana. For people with kidney problems, this amount is more than 20% of the daily potassium limit that is advised. What other fruits are suitable for kidneys if you are not a fan of bananas? Thankfully, there are plenty of fruits that are low in potassium, yet high in fiber, vitamins, and antioxidants. Apples, berries, grapes, pineapples, watermelons, and peaches are a few of these. These fruits can provide vital nutrients without raising the danger of potassium overload, making them a tasty and healthy addition to a diet that is favorable to the kidneys. Number six, tomatoes. While their juicy flavor and culinary diversity are well known, tomatoes also have a high potassium content. For those who have kidney illness, this becomes very concerning since their kidneys may not be able to remove too much potassium from the blood. 
How much potassium are tomatoes then? It's pretty heavy. A single medium tomato has roughly 290 milligrams of potassium. The concentration is even higher in processed forms. About 900 milligrams of potassium can be found in one cup of tomato sauce and 700 milligrams in one cup of tomato soup. This implies that for a person with kidney illness, a single serving of tomato-based foods like soup or sauce might provide almost half of their daily potassium requirement. Is it necessary for you to cut out tomatoes entirely from your diet? No, not always. In moderation, tomatoes can still be enjoyed. Fresh tomatoes or salt-free canned tomatoes are the best options. A quarter of a fresh tomato or two teaspoons of tomato sauce or paste are the recommended serving sizes. It's also crucial to watch portion proportions. Draining and rinsing canned tomatoes might also aid in reducing their potassium level. Tomato flavor can still be enjoyed without drastically affecting your potassium consumption if you follow these measures. We have discussed the 10 foods that can worsen kidney impairment, particularly for those who are already coping with the difficulties associated with kidney illness. It's important to keep in mind that the amount of minerals you take in each day, such as potassium, phosphorus, and sodium, should be carefully customized based on your individual health status, the stage of your kidney disease, and your treatment plan. It's crucial to speak with your nutritionist or doctor to find the ideal balance for you. Now, we're keen to hear your insights. Do you typically include any of these foods in your diet? Before watching this video, were you aware of their possible effects on renal health? Kindly leave your ideas and experiences in the comments section below. We value your opinions very much, as does our community. We appreciate your time, and together let's carry on this crucial discussion about preserving kidney health.